And this is, you know what, this will lead into, uh, as you alluded to earlier, that I did want to bring up a, a clip of Ben Shapiro that was brought to my attention in my, uh, I have a private Facebook group because my life is spent copying everything that you do, Tom Woods. And uh, <laughs> so um, th this clip was posted recently, and it, it kind of speaks to what we're talking about here with, uh, you know, inconsistencies in people's moral and political views. And so one of the first things, let me just give a little uh, background for this. So for people who know, because I've told my story many times on the podcast, but I was first brought into this libertarian world by Ron Paul, It was the Giuliani moment, as it's called, although I have renamed that the Ron Paul moment because it was really not about uh, Rudy Giuliani at all. Who that, that could have been anyone on that stage. It just happened to be him. Um, but that moment sparked my interest, and then the, I was researching everything I could get my hands on to, to learn more about Ron Paul, and I found uh, Peter Schiff first, and then I found you. And Tom was really the guy who convinced me on, on this philosophy. So just giving that background. And one of the things that, Tom, you used to do uh, during the Ron Paul uh, days, which was like my favorite thing ever, is you would make these videos smacking down the anti-Paulians of the world and the people who were critiquing Ron Paul and you would do them in this kind of succinct, just devastating fashion. And so as I have you on the show and someone brought this clip to my attention, I thought, how much fun would it be to do one of them right here on part of the problem? And just so you know, I have not heard this clip. I haven't seen it, so I don't know what's going to hit me here. Okay. All right. So you're going in fresh. I have seen the clip, full disclosure. So this was uh, – Ben Shapiro goes around speaking at a lot of different uh, uh, colleges, and he, he usually will give a little bit of a speech and then take a question and answer segment. I, I will preface this by saying Ben Shapiro is a guy that I, I have a lot of respect for. I think I'd probably agree with uh, large areas of, of his views. And he does a phenomenally good job at smacking down – uh, campus leftist nonsense, which, you know, Tom it, it does a great job at that as well. Um, but here are the parts. See if you can notice the, uh, the inconsistencies. So here's Ben Shapiro taking a question from a student. Hello, Ben. My name is Joe. Um, I'm holding my phone because I'm recording for my dad. He's a big fan, so he says hi. Oh, tell him I say hi. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, dad. How's it going? <laughs> so I have two pretty serious points to address. Um, in 2016, you had put out a list of people that you thought were characterized as the alt-right. And one of them happened to be uh, a philosopher who I hold pretty highly, Ron Paul. And I was kind of curious why you put Ron Paul on that list, just because um, Ron Paul was one of the people that did inspire me to conservatism. Right. So Ron Paul's libertarian views on government, I'm largely in agreement with, and that's not what makes him alt-right on that list. What made him alt-right on that list was a, a sense of identity politics that amounted to him engaging in, in relatively open anti-Semitism, unfortunately. Uh, Ron Paul wrote for an anti-Semitic newsletter in Texas. Uh, he wrote a book in which he equated uh, anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism and then basically said that he was anti-Zionist. Uh, you know, he, he's been involved with soft peddling members of the alt-right for a long time. I think that the idea of him as a pure alt-right figure might be a bit of an exaggeration. Maybe, maybe you want to say that he is friendly to the alt-right, at least a lot of, on the alt-right are friendly to him. Um, but uh, the, the relationship in terms of foreign policy uh, he, I would say he's a paleocon who verges on alt-right. Not everybody who's paleo, may, may, maybe you're right. Maybe the idea is that he's not fully alt-right because he doesn't espouse a white supremacist view that says that white people are superior to other people, but he is fully in line with, a, with an anti-Semitic view that views Israel as the font of all evil in the, in the Western world, uh, and he has given aid and comfort to a lot of folks on the alt-right. Uh, so I think that, that that's probably a fair criticism. Okay. All right, Tom. So you heard uh, uh, the question. First off, let me just say that it did kind of warm my heart that a college student stood up and said, uh, here's a philosopher who I hold in high regard, who, who yeah. you put on this alt-right list. So I did like that. But what, what's your uh, uh, response to Ben Shapiro? Well, it's interesting that Shapiro more or less concedes that probably <laughs> the kid has a fair point, Yeah, which is more than most people would say. They would just double down. But he says that Ron Paul f supports identity politics, and I thought, the same Ron Paul, you sure? The same grandfatherly guy we saw who just constantly avoided that sort of thing all the time? The same guy who, before every group he was invited to, he just talked about individual rights? You've probably heard me say this before, but he was invited to an Arab-American dinner. Mm -hmm. And they said, Dr. Paul, have you written a special speech for our group? And he says, no, it's the same speech I give everywhere. <laughs> That's the exact opposite of identity politics, right? Yeah. The exact opposite. I give the same speech to every group. I don't care what your identity is. Then it was open anti-Semitism. Well, open? 
what open anti semitism like what was he saying jews are terrible people i mean did you ever hear ron paul say something like that that would be open anti semitism so then it turned out he wrote for an anti semitic newsletter now look i I've heard this one sort of thing a million times. Yeah. First of all, did they just reprint an article of his, a speech or something? I don't know. Let me look at highly, highly unlikely. I basically don't believe that. But he's upset that Ron Paul made a distinction between anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist, that you can be anti-Zionist without being anti-Semitic. Well, obviously you can. Zionism just has to do with should the uh, Jewish people have a national home in Palestine, because that's what Zionism eventually became. And initially, Zionism was not committed necessarily to Palestine as the home for the Jewish people, but eventually that's what it became. And early on, like if you look at the late 19th century, the most ferocious opponents of Zionism were religiously observant Jews, because they viewed it as uh, as hubris, that, that God would miraculously restore the Jewish people at a time of his choosing. It's not like God is waiting for human effort, like, you know, let's get off our rear ends and give God a little push here. That, that was viewed as, as uh, not how history was supposed to go. So, it, so there were plenty of anti-Zionist Jews right around the time Zionism was being started. So that, that, that whole thing, and then he says, well, maybe he's not friendly to the alt-right, but the alt-right is friendly to him. Well, what, again, what does that mean? So I'm responsible for the views of people who happen to like what I have to say. John Wayne Gacy voted for Jimmy Carter. I don't nice. blame Carter for that. <laughs> and likewise, I bet there are people who like Ben Shapiro, who he probably would not want to invite to his home for dinner. I bet there are a lot of of, of boorish people who have very, very unfashionable, unfashionable views who happen to like Ben Shapiro. But I wouldn't say that's the reason we shun Ben Shapiro. I would say smearing people like this would be a much more uh, a much better reason and then being critical of israel i mean obviously the idea that ron paul thinks israel is the font of all evil in the world is absurd i mean i'm sure he thinks the u.s government is the font of all evil if he had to pick one oh i that's mean his yes view. he spent far more time talking about the the chaos that the the u.s government has created in the middle east than he ever did about israel probably because he's an american who was an american congressman who was running for president of the united states of america uh but you know one of the things that really stuck out to me about this that i just find kind of hilarious is that they go first of all so he starts by saying that ron paul engaged in identity politics which as you point out right away i mean that just could not be further from what Ron Paul uh, uh, ever talked about. And then he says he engaged in identity politics for being anti-Zionist. Zionism yeah. is the definition of identity politics. What could be more identity <laughs> politics than Zionism? <laughs> I mean, like, point. he also, by the way, you know, he says there, if you actually catch the exactly what Ben Shapiro says, he says he had a book uh, where he wrote about Zionism. Now, I really do wonder if Ben Shapiro's read the book. The book he's referring yeah, uh, to right. is uh, Liberty Defined. And he, he says, Ron Paul equated anti-Semitism with anti-Zionist and then said he's anti-Zionist. Well, close, except 180 degrees wrong. What he actually did was say it's unfair to equate anti-Semitism with anti-Zionism right. and then criticized Zionism. So he, he went out of his mate to make the opposite point. And the, the, yes, of course, the idea that um, um, if you're critical of Israel, well, I mean, let's turn this around on Ben Shapiro a little bit. Uh, so Ben Shapiro is very critical of college campuses. Ben Shapiro is against education. Evidently, right? I mean, you can't be critical of something now without what, like hating all of the people involved in it. It, it really is one of it, it. It drives me crazy because it's everything that Ben Shapiro spends his entire career blasting. He instantly becomes when when Ron Paul or anti-war libertarians are brought up. It's like, oh, actually, you're engaging in identity politics. You're slamming someone as essentially being a bigot just because they're critical of, of certain policies. Like, okay, he's critical of, of Israel's foreign policy. So am I, and I'm a Jew whose whole family is Jewish. Like, wh what is that? You know, this is absurd. And of course, it's not like he just randomly chooses Israel, or as, as Shapiro would say, he chooses Israel because it's full of Jewish people and he hates them, so that's why he's critical. There, there's something about the relationship between Israel and the United <laughs> States that does not exist between a lot of other countries. Like We don't have the United States Senate voting 99 to 1 or 100 to 0 in favor of resolutions favoring particular countries that – 
everybody else in the world is voting 100 to 0 against. There's, there is nothing that compares with the American relationship with Israel. And the point is that in having that relationship, the United States risks alienating uh, public opinion in a lot of countries in the Middle East. Now, people will say, oh, those countries aren't going to like you anyway. But that's actually not true, and we can prove that. Uh, in the years after World War I, if you were to go to – uh, Syria, as, they, as the King Crane Commission did, and say, which country would you like to govern you as a League of Nations mandate? They overwhelmingly said the United States. The United States had an excellent reputation in the Middle East through the first half of the 20th century, and then the relationship with Israel came up. Now, it could well be that the relationship with Israel is so self-evidently, obviously good that it trumps all the negative consequences. But the point is there obviously are negative consequences. There's no other country we have that kind of relationship with. So why wouldn't you pay particular attention to that relationship and see if on balance it's it's a good thing or a bad thing for the United States? There's nothing obvious about that. It's not self-evident. You don't come out of the womb knowing that the relationship with Israel is a net plus. You have to examine it. Yeah, no, that that's absolutely right, and it's a really good point that you, that you bring up with Syria being uh, uh, looking at the United States so favorably. It turns out that in the Middle East at that time, they really liked uh, America and they really hated the English and the French. I wonder why. Yeah, Sh shocking. Well, you know who who could put that uh, uh, puzzle together? Then you start acting like the English and the French, and they don't like you anymore. How about that? Yeah, it's almost like when you slaughter people's families, they tend to hate you. Yeah, so there you go. It's it's just so infuriating because this is a guy who all he deals with all day long is people calling him a Nazi because he'll say like, you know, whatever, like he's against welfare. So now they say he's a racist and he just engages in the exact same thing. He falls right to their level once, uh, uh, you know, he's challenged. And yes, I, I do acknowledge what you said. You can clearly see, which is very rare, but you see Ben Shapiro backpedaling a little bit and saying like, well, maybe he's not like – you know, completely open about his anti-Semitism. Look, man, Ron Paul, I, I, so I'll just share a, a story just briefly. So the, when I met Ron Paul in, uh, and I was on the Ron Paul Liberty Report, um, and so me and Ron Paul and, uh, and Daniel McAdams, we, we talked in his office for about a half hour. Then we went out and we filmed the episode. And then we came back and we spoke in his office for like another hour. And I, I had mentioned... Uh, something during the show about my grandfather escaping uh, uh, Germany during the Second World War, and he asked he asked me more about that, and you know I gave a little bit of my family history that they were Austrian Jews who then moved to Berlin, and um, and that my grandfather got out in in thirty eight, and he said um, he asked me he said uh, uh, did anyone else uh, you know who else in your family got out, and I said uh, my grandfather was the only one the uh, the rest of them all died a few of them died in in death camps and and a few of them just died in the war. And, uh, and Ron Paul, I'll never forget this moment. It, it's such a sincere moment. Ron Paul just put his head down in his hand, sitting at his desk, and he goes, what a tragedy. What a tragedy. And then he, he started talking about how Mises was run out of the country and how his work was destroyed and how awful World War II was. I mean, the idea that this guy has a hateful bone in his body, you are so off your freaking rocker. You, you're just – it's like every time someone has to criticize the Mises Institute or they criticize you or Ron Paul, it can never just be like, um, well, here's what I think they get wrong. This is why I don't think anarcho-capitalism is the way to go or this is where I think that they you know, made a, a false argument. It's always like, muhuhahaha, I know they've never said anything about this, but I'm telling you, somewhere under the surface is a real hateful person. And it's so stupid. It's always something like, yeah, and – he was in the bathroom and at the stall next to him was some guy who asked him a question. It's a stupid. Well, show me something I've done. I mean, just give me. But, you know, and there was a time in my life where I used to chase after these people and say, hey, I'm not such and such that you're accusing me of. But, you know, at some point, you got to just reclaim your dignity and say, look, anybody who's seeking the truth will immediately, as soon as they get, they see your persona and they listen to you a little bit, they immediately know this is the typical made up hysteria that we see 24 hours a day. They'll just know it. And if they don't see that, then I, I just don't care. I mean, I really, I, I'm not going to try to persuade somebody like that. There are, so, there are so many regular, normal, rational people that I can go after. I want to go after the low-hanging fruit. Yeah, no, I, look, I, I agree with you on that. And it's just, it's, it's completely unfair and, and just so beneath a guy who, who is as smart as Ben Shapiro to say, which essentially is, is what his position is, is that – 
We can talk about all these issues. We, we can talk about the most provocative, the most, you know, like, like uh, inflammatory issues. And, and God bless him for all that. I, I admire the fact that he's got uh, the, the stones to go in and say, hey, you know what? Uh, instead of just bitching about systematic racism, how about this? How about don't have kids out of wedlock, don't do drugs, and graduate high school? And then there's like an 80% chance you won't end up in poverty. How about that? I can say this, this harsh truth, which is wildly politically incorrect to say, okay, I'm all for that. However, we're not allowed to criticize the wars or the Fed because then, of course, you're an anti-Semite.